Physical literacy begins with you. All over the province, people just like you have brought physical literacy into their communities. As health champions, supporting others in being active. As role models. As connectors. Physical literacy and you initiatives, known as playgroups, are supporting the physical literacy movement. The vision of the playgroups is that physical literacy champions feel connected, supported, and engaged. Playgroups connect individuals and organizations who see the potential of physical literacy as the gateway to a more active, healthy society. The link on your screen will also send you to a profile page. By telling us a little bit about yourself, we can connect you with support and resources in your community. Thank you for taking the time to reflect. We look forward to connecting with you and supporting your community's physical literacy journey. So that is uh, clips of local uh, people being active in Alberta and some of the programs and partners that we have. Uh, but there's other videos that could enhance other areas of your training. So if you were wanting to get some discussion around inclusive programming, there's a, a, a clip of a video that would kind of prompt that and allow for some discussion. So if you want to add some different facilitation techniques to your training, those are some tools that you have access to use. Uh, like I said, it's, it's nice because it's some Alberta content and some of our local partners uh, as part of those videos. And you're also welcome to send your staff to that site too to get information. Like I said, it is new, so it's meant to be a wiki site, so it's meant to be propagated by information from, ev from the whole community, so you're welcome to put information on there as you see fit. All right, so I'm just going to go over a little bit from, uh, some, from a facilitation side of things. So in your handout uh, that you have, it talks a little bit about facilitation, if you want to grab that. So this is uh, something that's in your, in your information, the online files, uh, a handout on facilitation. So this is, again, something that we can all learn uh, a little bit more about our facilitation skills, but also something that you want to translate to your staff. So just to kind of start out, I wanted to ask, what are some facilitation techniques that you notice that maybe some of the presenters use throughout the day today to engage you? Tight pants, Doug, tight pants, yep. PowerPoints, yep. Games and movement, yep. They were interactive, they asked questions and asked for responses. Yep. Anything else? Handouts, yep. They would move around too, right? So they wouldn't stay in one spot on stage, or they wouldn't even stay on stage necessarily. Yep, good. Anything else? Yep. Uh, was was everyone up here the expert, or did they also allow for some feedback and sharing? So I think that that also happened too. There's two-way communication in terms of sharing. So uh, this is just a little bit of, of some information pulled out from this handout. So again, this is something that you could use with your staff, uh, because when you're having someone that's new to do uh, physical activity programming within your site, these are skills that are learned over time. It's not something that you just walk out and, you know, it's rare that you get someone that just can walk out and is amazing. It takes time for uh, people to figure out what their style is, what works best for them. Uh, they may be nervous talking in front of people, they may not be. So these skills take time to develop. So the more that you can practice and allow for opportunities where they're able to, to, to learn and, and see other people uh, with their facilitation skills, the more that they'll have in their tool belt. So the one thing that we really want to encourage and one thing that we talk about all the time in this field in physical activity is that we want to engage people by, by doing versus just sitting and getting. So really allowing for opportunities for the learning to be more active. So hopefully throughout the day you've seen some examples of how you can do that. Um, one of the other one that's in your handout that I just wanted to point out that, that facilitation guide is um, even, for example, like fundamental movement skills. Instead of you just sitting there and brainstorming fundamental movement skills, well, you have a poster on the wall, you stand a few meters away, one skill at a time, you have to run and write it on the board. Like that simple task may help the participants remember those skills or whatever that topic is a little bit more. So those are simple facilitation tips that you can use. So we really want to make sure that we're engaging people uh, with the information and engaging them in an active way. We can't expect the programming to happen if we're not showing what it could look like on the other end. So we really want to make sure we're modeling that. Um, this is just a little bit of information on active versus passive learning. So I know there is a place for PowerPoints, there is a place for handouts, uh, but most of the active learning 
would occur when they're actually doing it. So if we play a game, you'll probably remember it more than me describing that fundamental movement skill relay to you. Um, you'll have to read it later to, to remind yourself. So we really want to focus on the active learning compo component of, of our facilitation and ensuring that we're showing versus just talking about it and allowing for that practical opportunity. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get into some groups and work on some facilitation uh, techniques. So what I'd like you to do first is I'd like you to, um, first of all, I want you to get with, a, get with a partner. So as fast as you can, stand up. Uh, I want you to find a partner. Once you're ready, uh, I'd like you to do uh, a yoga pose of some sort with your partner so that I know that you're ready. So you can stand up, find a partner, get into a yoga pose that you're matching. Tree pose, yeah. Got some surfacing over there. All right, so you can uh, relax in your pose. You can just stand up so you're relaxed. I see some people are extra relaxed over there. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on some facilitation skills with your partner. Uh, what I'd like you to do is so we're going to, this is called uh, a passion talk. So what you're going to do is you're going to have, if you have your phone, you can put on a timer. Uh, I'll also turn mine on so we can do it for the whole group. Uh, you're going to take turns for one minute sharing something that you feel comfortable talking about that you are really passionate about. Okay, so it, anything. It can be anything. It can be your dog. It can be that you like to cook. Anything that you want. Okay, so you're going to have a talk with your, your, your partner for one minute. And then you're going to, after that, we're going to kind of debrief on their facilitation of sharing you that, that topic. Okay, so I'm going to get my timer ready. All right, stop. Stop your conversation. All right, so now we're going to switch. Now the second partner is going to share something that they're really passionate about for one minute. Ready? Go. All right, stop your conversation. Okay, so when you're thinking about the facilitation of your partner telling you something that they're passionate about, what are some things that you notice about their facilitation style of getting that information to you? Just by talking, what are some things that maybe you notice when someone's sharing something that they really believe in? Eye contact. Eye contact, yeah. yeah. Humor. Humor, yeah. They get their hands going, yeah. Anything else? Yep. Smiling. Smiling. So what about the 60 second? Did that, ham did that impact what you were saying? It wasn't enough time, yeah. <laughs> Good? Good? So when we're, when we're facilitating or trying to get information across to others, these are things that we want to consider. So you might be passionate about something, the other person may not be, so how are you going to engage them? When you were talking to them, because we're all, you know, maybe have been doing this for a while, you're probably thinking, okay, what can I say that would maybe excite them, you know, looking at them? So including these different tactics so, tactics. so it's really important when you're trying to get a message across that you think about some of these things. And when we, when we think back to if you're working directly with a child and if you're trying to get some information to them that may be that something they may not be passionate about, like learning how to do something or the instructions for a game, like Doug really uh, showed us this morning, when you give specific instructions, sometimes they need to be really short and concise. So you know, we want to be pulling on the, the passion that you have for, for being active, and I assume that's, that's why everyone's here. So using some of those skills, we also want to be thinking about the way that you're delivering this information so that it makes sense to the user that's also getting it, and it also means something to them. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, do a practical activity uh, where we're going to work on some of the things that maybe you've learned today. So what's going to happen is we're going to get into sm some small groups, about uh, four to six people. You're going to get a piece of paper and you're going to just write down some key things that you feel like you've learned today. So key topics. 
that you've learned today on the piece of paper, and then uh, I'll give you some f further instructions after that. So if you want to join up with another group of two so that you're four or six, then come grab a paper and a pen and start to write down some of the topics that you learned today. So think about globally some of the topics, think about some specific things that you remember. It can be, maybe think about things that you would like to share with your staff from what you've learned today. That kind of a topic. All right, so in order for you to share some information with, with your staff, so as we mentioned, when, when a new staff comes to you and you get them into a program, they may not have a lot of experience, this might be their first time, and if you're talking about like a, a concept like physical literacy, it might not mean that much to them yet until they've actually experienced how to provide opportunities for, for kids to be active. So this is an example of how you can get people to maybe start small. So what you're gonna do in your group is you're going to assign your items with some of the learning that you learned today. So for example, the soccer ball in this group, maybe that's physical literacy. The other, one of the other balls is gonna be leadership. And then you're gonna assign one person as the catcher. And then it's their job for them to receive all the information. So again, just a visual way of showing what, what happens when you're getting lots of information at once. So one person will be the catcher, and it's your job to catch all of this information from your group. So you guys can stand up, decide who's the catcher, and then see if they can handle all this information that you're gonna be throwing at them. Okay, so each group can try it, stand up, decide who's your catcher. <laughs> so again, we're just showing in a, in a real literal way what happens sometimes when you get lots of information. So I know that I've been in situations where someone is telling me something and I'm thinking, I don't even know what you're saying to me right now. I've also been a facilitator of sessions where I could tell from someone's face they have no idea what I'm talking about at the time. So we really need to make sure that as we're giving information that we're reading the group and, and, and reading the person to make sure that they get the information, whether that's at the facilitation level or right on the ground working with, with a, a, a youth or, or someone in a program. So what I want your group to decide is decide of those four items, maybe an order that you would give that information in and why and then see if you can get your, your catcher to catch each item and maybe give them a little bit of information as you pass each, each item to them about what, you're, what you wanna share with them about that topic. Okay, so just slow it down a little bit, see if you can get those, those three. Those? You can bring them back, yep. All right, so what we're going to move on to doing is uh, the, the end of your, of your worksheet, the facilitation practice. So what we're going to be doing is working in a small group of two or three, and you're welcome to choose anyone that you want to work with. What you're going to do is you're going to choose a topic. So there's some topics on there that you can choose or you can choose a different topic, maybe something else that you learned today. And then you're gonna plan a five minute session on that topic and how you're gonna deliver your message uh, based on what we have here today. So if you wanna write something up on a piece of paper, if you're just gonna share, if you're gonna do an active game or activity. And then once, I'm gonna give you guys about five minutes to plan that, then we're gonna teach and, and, and teach our activity to another group and then just kind of share some observations on the other group's facilitation and, and then we're going to, to switch and do it the other way. So you can choose a partner, the back page of your handout, choose a topic either from on that list. Uh, there's also a couple other topics that you could possibly choose, like these key concepts that maybe that you're trying to share with your staff or anything else that you learned today. So if you wanna move around to find a partner, if you need any paper or markers, there's some stuff up here, and you're gonna create a, a five minute maximum session on a topic relating to something that you learned today around physical literacy. Can I just clarify question? Yep. Joe, together? No, together with your partner, you're gonna create a learning opportunity for someone else, yeah. 
So I'll give, I'll give you guys about five minutes to get something together, and check in and see if you need any more time. Okay? If you need any equipment to show what you want to show, you're welcome to use equipment. All right, so if we can uh, bring it back together, and if I can get maybe some groups to share some of the unique, uh, the unique facilitation techniques they saw, or if, you, if the other group did anything that really impressed you, anything you want to share? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Um, so I was going to say, you guys, I really liked your idea of having an open discussion, um, really using the expertise that's in the room already, yeah. and creating an open space for that throw out the topic and then have people discuss what they already know about it and then challenge them on the topic or the key points that they don't know yet and then regroup and ask questions at the end. Yeah, and I like that too and I find that when you're facilitating sometimes you actually don't do as much work as you like you're the one that is actually facilitating like true facilitation doesn't mean that you're the expert in the room there's lots of knowledge and and people do want to have their voice heard so I think that's a really key one to do. Did you have something? Oh, there's love in the front group here. <laughs> we played a game. We started off playing a game about elimination, and you know, the first person to be eliminated had to sit there for the rest of the game, and how it felt, and how we can change it and adapt it. And, so yeah. and I think that's important too. Like I said, when you've been doing this for a long time, you assume that maybe people know some of these concepts that we're trying to be sharing, but if you haven't actually experienced it yourself, or if you get someone that comes to your program as a leader that's a great athlete, you know, they're always, you know, really good at the games and really competitive, they may not see that other side of, of the coin. So if they haven't had that experience, they might not know what that feels like. And so for them, they might be providing some negative experience for the kids in your program. Anything else? So I just wanted to mention one thing. Yeah. Um, when we were working as a group, I'm sorry, I can't remember Cor the name. Cor Coral mentioned that, um, like, one thing that she does is get kids into smaller groups, yep. discuss it, and then bring that back to the larger group. So I just thought that that was a great way to engage discussion. Yeah. And sure. um, vote ideas. Yep. Yeah, so smaller groups. Anyone else? What about the other groups yet yeah, in the back? And sometimes too, again, you take for granted. So I take for granted that in this room, I assume that the people here are a little bit more outgoing and willing to answer questions. But I've done a lot of facilitation sessions where you ask a question and nobody says anything. So you really have to read your, your crowd and your group because you never know who you're going to get. And one year you may get a out, you know, really outgoing group and then the next year you might get, it might be like pulling teeth. So you really have to work with who you have there, definitely. It's really important. Yeah. Candy, Shh. yeah. So finding those motivators, and that's what s some of the speakers talked about that today too. So finding out what those motivators are, yeah. yeah. And again, creating that environment that you feel comfortable. So there may be some pre-work that you have to do in the beginning to make someone feel like, again, like Doug said, oh, I wasn't expecting that you guys would have hugged each other today. But obviously, you know, maybe the people in the room today feel a little bit more comfortable and more willing to do that. Um, so you need to create that environment that you feel welcome and that you feel like you have a voice and, and your opinion matters as well. Anything else to, to debrief? So uh, we have Jody here who's going to do a couple uh, dance play dances with us as a, as a break um, just before we head into our real break and, and go for the, the pool and then the last session. Uh, so I'm, who's planning on going swimming? I was hoping for more hands. I know Jen was hoping for more hands. Uh, so what we'll, what we'll do is after uh, Jody's finished, then we'll head into the foyer for those that are swimming, and then otherwise everyone else will stay in here to do some games and activities. Um, on the only other thing that I just wanted to, to make sure, because this is our last time kind of together as a group. Uh, you're welcome to leave after the last session, whether you're in here or you're with Jen. So there's just a post survey, which is basically the same as the one that you uh, filled up before. So if you can grab one of those before you leave. 
Um, and then I'll follow up with another email with all of the, the additional files and if you have any questions uh, and also with just a small survey again just to kind of uh, finish up with the day. Um, yeah, I think that's it for housekeeping items. Uh, and then I'll let Jody take it away and then we'll be heading to our next session to start at uh, 2.30. So if you guys want to go to the back, I'm assuming, yeah, thanks.